Um, I'm originally Iranian. I was born and raised in Iran f until I was 18. Then we moved to Turkey. I, sta I stayed there from 2011 to 2013 that I came to Canada. And the problem was my dad uh, had was an activist, workers and student activist. Mm -hmm. So the government wasn't really okay with the, his activities. So he was always uh, he watched and he had a lot of problems in the country. So he left. Mm -hmm. And two years after that, we decided that we wanted to be a family again. So we left and joined him in Turkey. Well, my main problem was that I couldn't study. I wasn't allowed to study because I was a temporary resident and I, like my identity, my rights weren't recognized really there. Mm -hmm. So they were just allowed us to stay there until United Nations found another country for us to move to. Well, we moved here in winter and it was one of the coldest winters. I, I didn't think that I could get used to the weather. That was the first thing that came to my mind, but I did. I did get used to the weather. <laughs> But at the very beginning, I was really depressed because I had this whole life before and it was one more time starting from square one. Get everything, make the house feel like home again. It was one of the hardest things that I had to do over and over again because we were moving in Turkey a lot too. So no house felt like home anymore. It was just somewhere you stayed. And it was the problem of having no friends. I didn't know anyone, and I was used to being always in crowded places, having a lot of friends around me, going out with friends. But here, it was really hard to communicate with people. I don't know why. I think partially it was me who I had been isolated for so long. I didn't really know how to socialize anymore. And then it was the problem of school. I wasn't sure what I'm going to do. I didn't know the system. I didn't know when I can move on and go to university, which was something I was really looking forward to all along. But then it got better. Like as it, like it took, I can say it took six to seven months to get used to everything. It was very slow and gradual, but it did and I'm feeling really good at the moment. It's finally starting to feel like home again. Like it's starting to feel like I have a home, which is something I think I lost somewhere along the line from moving to, from Iran to Turkey and Turkey to Canada, but starting to be okay again. I was born in Nepal, but my parents were born in Bhutan, which is a small country in Asia. So my origi origin would be Bhutan, but since I was born in Nepal, I would call myself Nepalese. I, I am a Nepalese, but how I was a refugee is a different question. So since Nepalese were uh, illegally living in Bhutan, they had to flee Bhutan and come to Nepal and uh, settle down as refugee. So uh, people were starving to death in the beginning and there were lots of diseases with no medical treatments and eventually uh, sponsors U United Nations, UNHCR, World Food Program came in to help us and we settled down as a refugee in seven different camps. There were no opportunities for education as for futures for small children and small uh, boys and girls. So we were uh, going for a third resettlement in Western countries such as Canada, United States, and European countries as well for opportunities and for our bright future. So youths uh, face many challenges and many traumas since they had poor uh, shelter, poor food. And when growing up in a camp, you face a lot of challenges like people were murdering here and there, people were dying because of diseases, people were starving, people were uh, old people who had nowhere to go, sleeping just around the streets. So people felt uh, trauma in their brain, uh, trauma. And still, when people came to the United States and other countries, other Americas, other uh, countries like European countries, they still had that trauma. And that's what's uh, holding immigrants to get adapted to their new country. So they are uh, emotionally touched since uh, in Nepal they felt discrimination against the original Nepalese people who are residents of Nepal. 
and they would uh, discriminate us and we would have to stick together without adapting with them because we couldn't communicate with them and that was, was what was stuck in our minds. So even when we're here in a better country, people would still think that people would discriminate us in this country and still sticking together uh, in a community that was holding like immigrants to adapt to the new country of culture and opportunities in Canada. Our camp was very crowded. There were uh, lots of people in a very confined space and there were lots of people who were starving. But when I came here, uh, everything was different. There was, everything was enough. Everything was, full, like, everyone was happy. So when I came here, I became happy myself by seeing other being happy. And that was something that I couldn't achieve back home. I left my grandmother before, uh, when I came here. They were eventually gonna come here, but she passed away when she was still back home and at that time I felt really, really sad and that was some of my dark times in my life. And I still worry about friends and family who are back home because I know how it feels to live life as a refugee. I know how hard life is, how hard everything is. People couldn't afford to even eat if they don't get any work and coming here there's everything none of the peoples are going to starve to death here. Uh, so overall, I still worry about my friends and family back home. Well, my country of origin is Congo, a Democratic Republic of Congo. Okay, there was a lot of insecurities going on. Like, it's been there for a long period of time. So when it happened, we had to move to another country. Like there was a lot of killings and we had to find security in another country. I don't know why they keep on doing that, because, but what I know is that they say particularly my tribe doesn't belong to the country, then they should find where they belong to and we don't know where we belong to because we were born there, our parents were born there. Mm -hmm. So it's quite disturbing because you don't know your origin, but what I know is that I was born there, my parents were born there. I don't know the rest of the stories. Most of the youth are affected emotionally, psychologically, because of the things they go through. Like, uh, if someone is bullied in school, you always have interruptions in your education. Someone wants to go to school, but there is no chance for the, uh, the person to go to school. So every time, they are crying because they, they need peace, they want to go to school, but they don't have that chance. So most of them, they, I don't know if they run mad or something, but some of them have ended up to the streets because of the things they go through. When we left, we went to, uh, to Uganda because it was the nearby country. Uh, we had never been there, but because we were just following other people, mm -hmm. so we ended up in Uganda. Uh, we stayed there for some time, then we moved to Nairobi, Kenya. When I arrived in Nairobi, I had so many problems. Like I had a back problem. I wouldn't do much of the bending or even standing for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I was going, you know, I had a lot of medical pro uh, appointments. I think it was because of the medical issues and uh, my aunt was also having the medical problems so they said maybe if we, g we move to another country we could receive proper medication. So it was in 2012 that we were called to do a resettlement interview and we didn't know where we were going to. They just said it's a resettlement interview and we are finding a country to go to but we didn't know which country until um, towards the end of 2013. Mm -hmm. That's when they called us and said, you're going to Canada. I was so excited because I didn't expect that to happen. And the good thing about it is that I got, I received uh, the right medication and everything, so I was well. But everything seemed so different from what I had been through. Mm -hmm. 
like I was saying, everybody is friendly, you know, compared to back home, because at times, at home when you're walking, you're scared, you're like, ah, when I meet the other one, it's just going to slap me across my face, but here, I felt like, you know, I was living with people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was, everything so different from back home. I feel I'm at peace right now. I feel I found my home.